So since I made the last video, I went through a fair few changes um, on the map and I'm really happy to announce that the map is now up in the workshop. So if you'd like to check it out and subscribe to that, it would mean so much. Uh, although I didn't detail the whole map by the end of this video, I did start by detailing this corridor here uh, and I added some props that were multiplayer, which means that they were destructible and that was a lot of fun. Uh, and this was just a bit of practice really, but I'm excited to see the whole map look similar to this in the end. And I found some photos online recently that I want to base my map on, so once I have the gameplay all sorted out, I'm going to start working towards that. B-Site went through a lot of iterations over the last week. So firstly, I changed the open area to like an enclosed barn sort of thing. Uh, and then I moved the buildings back behind it. So uh, I got some feedback that bomb sites and corners don't usually work, which was something good to hear. So uh, me opening this up, you know, kind of made the map, uh, the, at least B-Site made it feel much better. Um, and in addition to that, I completely opened up this board here and this wall so that this section of the map would functionally be a middle where uh, with a bomb site in the middle. Um, and this played out pretty well when I played with my friends, so I'm excited to see how it works out in proper playtesting. Uh, CTs would arrive at this like top of the stairs pretty much a couple seconds before T, so it was a really good way of kind of orping down and it was another way of defending B site. I added some thin metal walls along these sections of the roof so that terrace would have some more cover. So that would really help to do with like, you know, CTs flanking or CTs pushing up quickly on the left side of the map. And I moved this wall forward to make it so players needed to skill jump to get up. And although it's not too difficult, this will make it harder for terrace to quickly jump up and kind of like ruin a diffuse in an afterplant situation. So it's kind of making it a high reward, like high risk thing to do. A bit later, I removed the tree from this corner of B site and put some cover down in its place. And then I moved the roof back above B to brighten it up a bit. In terms of A site, I pushed the wall back um, and it sacrificed a lot of space from that corridor leading to B, but it gave me a lot more area on A site. And I feel like this allowed for much more floor space where I actually needed it. And I needed, I moved some cover around, which made it feel much more fun to play around on A-Site. And then I also added a way up to the window and apartments. I also pulled out this wall, which allowed a player to peek uh, uh, out the door in what my friends and I now call secret, without being revealed from both windows and apartments. Um, you know, so now a player could walk out and peek one window at a time, which felt much better. Along a long, I moved some walls around, including pushing this wall back as well as this one, and I added some market stalls along here. Uh, this top of A long went through a fair few iterations, but I ended up with something much more open and simpler. And I found that if you want parts of your map to feel better to play in, you should just open it up. Um, and like think of think of how horrible parts of Office feels to play in. So sometimes you're better off just like you know making it more easy to move around, look up and down that sort of stuff. I moved the T spawn back a fair bit and I moved the CT spawn from here to here which both helped a lot with timing and fixed a lot of gameplay issues with my map and although I really thought um, I thought out the timing of my map in the first episode of my series my map has gone through so many changes that I needed to do stuff like this and although this feels really like bad to do and kind of like that I failed myself um, I'm sure it was a needed change so I guess, you know, you shouldn't feel ashamed if you ever need to do stuff like this with your map. <laughs> Don't feel bad if stuff that you thought would work originally ends up changing. I changed this roof to be a flat platform to make it feel way better to, you know, walk and play along. Um, and I added a trigger brush called a trigger underscore bomb underscore reset, which meant that when a terrorist threw the bomb off the edge for some stupid reason, it would magically teleport back to them or back to where you know they were standing last when they threw it um, and although i'm aware there's a lot of spots on my map where a terrorist could throw their bomb to deliberately get it stuck this was a spot where someone could just get shot and accidentally end up with the bomb down there so this is probably the start of me polishing my map i guess um, after that i dropped the brightness a little bit and i added some fog to my map which made it look a, little, a fair bit better and finally, I made my radar, which is just a temporary one for now. I promise once the map is, you know, in a more solid position, I'll make a much better looking radar. After that, I packed the map using Vide again, and I uploaded it to the workshop. So yeah, if you'd like to check out this map and play it for yourself, please, please, please check it out. Uh, leave a link in the description. 
and I would love some feedback and I would love some ratings on the map. It would mean so much. Uh, also, relatively soon, I'm going to play test it uh, through the Source Engine Discord. So if you're interested in joining along, feel free to comment and I'll reply with some details. And uh, just overall, thank you so much for watching this video. It means so much to me. And I want to further thank everyone who has decided to subscribe to my channel. It's insane that, you know, people are getting so engaged with the series. So I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a good night. See ya.